Happy New Year! It's exciting to be starting a new year and I'm Pisces so for me this is going to be apparently according to Georgia Nichols a very good year including more travel than usual which sounds pretty nice to me. Well on December 25th of 2015 my mom at 92 years of age passed away and her passing really prompted some reflection on this whole idea and theme of transitions. So I've decided that January is the month that we will look at transitions. Can a person transition well? Can you prepare for them? What really makes the difference or does it make a difference? And what types of transitions? So as I explored this topic, did a little bit of research, there's lots of information about change and transition. And so we're going to begin with that. And it's interesting because most people think about change and transition pretty much as the same thing. Making a change, making a transition. We use those words interchangeably, and yet the experts on change and transition see them as quite distinct. They think of change as something very definite. You change your hairstyle, your car, your job. Um, it's often an external thing that changes. But transitions seem to be viewed primarily as internal. It's the process, often, of handling change and how well we transition. And so as I think about my mom, 92, she had Parkinson's for over 30 years, and so what a transition for her, learning to live with that illness and how it affected her body. For years, even though she was less and less able, her faculties were diminishing in terms of mobility, um, she was still pretty cognitive and able to interact and be present, but lots of things were diminishing, her eyesight and so on. She said to me even a year ago, I'm not ready to go. And I would just check in with her, how are you feeling? A dear, dear friend of hers had passed away, Wally Thomas. And I thought maybe after he passed away at 92 as well, that might be a pivotal shift for her. But no, she wasn't ready. And so what is it? When are we ready for those big shifts and the transition? So the first thing that I realized as I started to look at transitions, they are all around us, that we're often transitioning. Um, I think the thing is we're not necessarily focusing on it. We're not necessarily bringing it to top of mind. And so what I'd like to start this week with is for you to do a little reflecting on what areas in your life might be bringing a transition, might be in transition, as you think of the whole year, 2016. What transitions could be coming up for you? Some of you may be journaling type people. This is a great topic to journal. Where could there be some transitions happening for me? Or maybe even you're aware that you're avoiding a transition. You know that it's a change has happened and there's a transition that really is being asked for and you're kind of avoiding delaying, stalling, sticking your feet in the mud, whatever. So let's just take some time because there's no way to really move through the stages of dealing with transition and change if we don't even recognize that we're facing a transition or a change. Later I'll talk about William Bridges' work. He's been studying change and transition for years. Over 25 years ago, he wrote a book on this, and he's really one of the experts in this area. And he talks about three phases of transition. So I'm going to look at those with you, and we can explore some of the things that go into really handling transitions well. So before I leave you now, in terms of thinking about what parts of your life might be in transition, let me just give you a few examples. It could be in terms of your physical body, there could be a change due to surgery or an accident. It could even be in terms of aging. What you're noticing is changing in your body. And have you been resisting some of that or not? It could be in terms of relationships. 
if you're beginning a relationship, if you're ending a relationship, if there's changes in location and you're not in proximity with a friend, there's going to be a transition. If you've moved, there's no doubt that's a big transition, a big change, how you build community, how you find people and that sense of like-minded support, all of that. But there also can be that internal sense of, am I transitioning in how I see myself? And I'll also be talking about a fabulous book, The Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer and his journey to let go of the ego-driven kind of Michael, or Mickey as he calls himself, and allow life, the universe, the divine, to be in charge as opposed to his mind dictating how he should do life. Well, that's a big transition. So there's lots of areas. It could include your children. They could be aging. They could be becoming teenagers. They could be becoming adults. They could be getting married. All of these events are changes and they offer the opportunity and really the possibilities of could we transition well through these changes. So for this week, starting off in January, I invite you to think about your life and where could transition be happening? Where is the opportunity for you? And just to kind of take note of some of those things. And then we'll t look next week at some of the things that the experts say can make a difference in how we do transitions.